today our champion Joanne Rosano of Weymouth, Massachusetts faces the challenge of Janice Hawk of Lynn, Massachusetts on Candlepin Bowling. <laughs> everyone, welcome once again to Candleton Bowling. I'm Don Gillis, but as usual, I'm speaking for the whole crew. When I say we're sure glad you joined us here at the Fairway in Natick, Massachusetts for three strings of Candleton Bowling total pinball to determine our winner. Now, each of our bowlers takes home a permanent souvenir. These are provided by Din Brothers of Boston and Hoyo. Each takes home some prize money. $1,200 is guaranteed, $700 to the winner, $350 to the runner-up, $50 available to the winner of each string, and should they tie, then they would each receive $50. Also, there will be a $50 gift certificate, and this comes from Rotman's Furniture in Worcester. That goes to the marksman of the day, the bowler with the most mark. Now, you will note, won't you, that I am wearing my double breastplate because it is a very special occasion today, and that is because these two ladies met, oh, about uh, 10 shows back, and uh, they switched championships. Uh, let's see, Joanne has won 10 in a row and is going for number 11. Janet has already won 11 in a row and lost to Joanne the last time. Okay, ladies, come on up here. Hi. Hey. It is a special day, isn't it? Certainly. You bet your life. I've been looking forward to this, and, I, and uh, Joanne, you know that I have, too. Yes, yes I because, do. Yeah, <laughs> and, and everybody here and everybody out there is, too. Now I have to know, how do you guys feel about it? Oh, I'm excited. I can't wait. Yeah. I just have to see what happens, I guess. Yeah. 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 You've you got to feel some extra tension, though. I mean, you no, are you're good friends, don't. aren't you? You don't, you don't feel any extra tension? No. And no. Nor do you? Well, heck, let's get started, all right? Right after this. <laughs> all right, leading it off, Janet Park, former longtime champion, challenger today. She has a spare lead. Three pins, three, five, and six, and she begins with a spare. Janet Park, high single 182, high triple 450, league average 123. Had a 639 in winning her roll off. And the fill is a spare leave. She has eight. And the two pins standing are the four and the seven. Ralph Stewart calls time. He's gone down to take a check on. There are two pieces of wood. One is up against, and the other, let's see. All right, there was one which was touching the line, so she has a better opportunity to make two in a row now with a piece of wood just to the right of the four. And she begins with two. All right. Defending champion, Joanne Rosano, high single 181, high triple 419, and league average 118. She's right on the head pin, but she gets a split. Seven pin alone over on the left side. On the right, the six and ten. There are two pieces of wood, one across and one perpendicular to the pit around the six and ten. And she hits. Oh, yes. Pretty, pretty shot. Oh, that is nice. Seven is a fill, and again, she has a split. This time, she has the four, seven, and over on the right, she has the six alone, but there are two pieces of wood in front of it. She has studied it, and goes after the six with the wood, and got some sidewall action, but not enough. Once again, Ralph. Stewart, our lob line judge and referee, calls time to take a check on the piece of wood. And it uh, was touching the deadwood line, which is exactly as I've told you many times before, 
exactly 24 inches from the head pin toward the bowler. It's going to be an eight. Now Janet Pock will be going for three in a row, and those of you who are familiar with our program know that three marks in a row, any combination of strikes or spears, is a $50 bonus. She's got a break. Again, she has seven for a fill, and the three pins that are left with no wood to help are the three, six, and 10. She has three in a row and $50 in bonus money. She has nine for a fill. And uh, speaking of that, it is the nine that she needs to get for another, and she has it. She now has four marks in a row and $100 in bonus money. And Joanne comes up. And the defending champion gets set to roll on lane two here at the fairway. She didn't get the head pin. She has left the one, two, four, and six. Wood in front of the six, and wood in front of the four and the seven. Take that back, it's the one, two, four, not the seven. So she gets the two and the four. It is a nine. Here's a special announcement for the folks watching on Channel 40 in Springfield. Our next program will be shown this afternoon at 2 o'clock, right after this show, right here on Channel 40. One, two, four, seven, wood between the four and the seven, and the nine pin with a piece of wood that's a little to the right of it. Everything except that nine pin. It's a 10. And after four boxes of the first string and uh, the second string, we always take a check on the scoreboard. And with another bonus ball to be rolled by Janet Pock, she is leading at the moment 64-44. Today's challenger and former champion, Janet Pock, with four consecutive marks, is about to roll a bonus ball. This one went to the left of the head pin, leaving the four horsemen on the right side, the one, three, six, and ten, the seven pin alone, no wood to help. Oh, she came so close to get, she got the four horsemen on the right and just missed that seven pin. It's a nine. She knocked down seven and she moved the uh, two pin just a little bit out of its position a little to the left so it's the two four and seven she's looking at and she got just the two pin presumably because it had moved out of its normal position a ten now our defending champion joanne rosano Joanne's had only one mark so far, and that was in the first box.
She has a two-pin leave, however, not an easy one, the five and the seven. And the wood is all behind the five pin or to the right of it. Oh, beautiful. Al Gilio, as usual, is on the electronic scoreboard, and Keith Williams on the big board. For the folks who are here, we've already mentioned Ralph Stewart, our live line judge and referee. The fill for Joanne is eight, and the two pins standing are the four and the seven. There's Ralph right on the lob line, as you can see. And another spare for Joanne. Don Riley is our statistician and coordinator. Bill Rubin, of course, is our producer and director. Janet Pock has just punched out not a complete spread eagle because the 10 pin went down. But outside of that, it's the 36247. And another single pin goes out. That was the six. Now she's going to go for the two, four, and seven, and she got it. A nine. Our crew today is Skip Peabody and Jeff Sullivan, our veterans, and we welcome today Carl Vieira and Keith Godfrey. Three pins to pick up for Janet Clock, and they are in a side saddle triangle of the three and the five and the nine. She got the five and nine. A 10. Now, Joanne Rosano has two marks in a row and a chance for bonus money for herself. She has a strike. Three marks in a row now for Joanne. Maybe a little too full on the head pin that time, and uh, she wound up with the five, six, and nine. One more. Now, side by side, five and six. A nine. Just two pins separating our bowlers. One, three, six, and nine on the right, four and seven on the left, one piece of wool, wood in, uh, and a complete miss by Janet. It's a diamond on the right, and she, yes, eventually got it. But it's an eight. Janet's league average, as we mentioned, is 123. Horseman left side, no wood to help. Got the one and the seven, left the two and four. It's an eight. which I told you is her league average. 
so she hit it right on the nose. But with four consecutive marks to begin, I'm sure she's disappointed with rolling just her average. Now our defending champion, Joanne Rosano of Weymouth, Massachusetts. She has a piece of wood in front of the seven, which is alone on the left. On the right, she has the four horsemen. One, three, six, and ten. Six and seven, still there. She got the seven, it's a nine box. First bonus ball gets six and leaves the three six and the four seven. All right, eight is the fill. And fifty dollars more in bonus money goes to Joanne Rosano for winning the first string, 136 to 123. Middle string, defending champion leads it off. Here she is, Joanne Rosano of Weymouth, Massachusetts. Knocks down seven pins, not an easy one. Piece of wood rolling, maybe it'll help. It's going over towards the left. The pins that are standing are the two, the seven, and the eight. And uh, that piece of wood went up against the eight pin and behind the two pin. She used it and begins with a spare. Great comeback, if you will, for Joanne in the, the first string when Janet began with four consecutive marks. But Joanne came back to pick it, take the lead with 13 pins, by 13 pins, I should say. All right, looking now for the possibility of a mark here with the one, three, six. No, two full on the head pin. By the way, somebody asked me to explain that, and I will when I get an opportunity. There was a classic example of it here. And she wipes it out. When I say too full on the head pin, I mean the ball comes in and hits the head pin directly in the middle of it, so it goes straight ahead instead of going to the left or the right and wiping out pins. What you want to do is hit either the right side or the left side, not uh, too thin, but when you come in too full, you're hitting it right in the middle, and it can only go one place. That is straight ahead with the ball pushing it and you don't get the action to the right or left of the ball. Janet Pock has a spare. Janet had a 639 in winning her roll off. Thin, thin hit on the right side. Just two. She punched out the two and the eight. Everything else still standing. She has three left. The six on the right, the four and the seven on the left. Wood on both sides in front of the object pin. Taking the two on the left naturally, but 
using the wood somewhat in the hope it would go over and get the other pin, the six pin. Joanne Rosano comes up. No wood to help, four horsemen right side, eight and the eight pin. Good try, she got everything except those on the back row, the eight and the 10. Wood in front of the eight. And naturally she used it and got a nine. she got that little edge to the right on the head pin and as a result eight pins went down as she scattered them more to the right but uh, to the left she left two pins the oh, ooh, three times she had a shot at getting the eight pin with the ball rolling across For the single, he, she has it. It's a 10. Now Janet Pop. Now she has a diamond right. This is made up of the three, five, six, nine. Made it. Spare in the third. Don't forget, you folks uh, in Channel 40 watching it, the next program is going to be shown this afternoon at 2 o'clock, right after this show, right here on Channel 40. She left one pin on the right in trying. She had three to try to get for a spare. Ten. Again, after four boxes, middle string and, of course, string, a check on the scoreboard. In case you just joined us, Joanne Rosano won the first string 136 to 123. Right now, two pins separating them in this string. Janet Park, 48. Joanne Rosano, 46. That one went off to the left on Joanne. She has five pins that she's looking at. Nope, there are still three there. It's an eight box. That ball went off to the right and there's a, a half Worcester. She took out the three and the nine. King, and Ralph has to go get a pin. Yeah. 
one four seven. Left to seven, it's a nine. <laughs> Had a lead of 11. Now let's see what happens with Janet Pock. Oh, is she going to get a strike? The five pin rocking back and forth. But Wood came all around it and basically kept it up. Fair. The lead presumably will be cut. Bonus. She got six. Three, six, four, seven, and uh, one piece of wood in between. Went too far to the right and missed that three pin. So it's still there, and the four pin is still there. A 10. All right, the lead down to two. left the six and ten. Two, seven, eight, six, and ten. A couple of pieces of wood in back. There's one over, well, it's sort of between where the four and seven and eight are. Uh, excuse me, two, seven, and eight. Now it's the seven alone with wood in front of it and the six and ten over on the right. Seven box. Janet with a chance now to take over the lead. She's within two pins of it, and now, depending upon what she does with this, we'll see what happens. First bonus ball gets her a spread eagle. So she got four, and that puts her in the lead. There's no wood to help. It's a pure spread eagle. She got the right side, and she also got the seven pin, leaving the two and four. A ten box. So, going into the final two boxes of the middle string, Janet Pock is leading by nine. Joanne Rosano comes back with a strike in the ninth box. She got a break. 
Just two pins, the six and the ten are standing. So the fill on the first ball was eight. And she'll be hoping to get the other two. Not only for the fact that it'll be ten, but it will be a spare. She got it. Now another bonus ball to be rolled. At 110 at the moment, plus a bonus ball. Here it is, one bonus ball, and she gets six. Now Janet Park. Janet had a nine pin lead after eight, but she's opposite a strike and a spare with a six fill. A lot of action, but there are still two pins standing. The five and the nine. And a piece of wood just to the right of the five pin. Yes, she made it. Big clutch spare. Boy, these two ladies sure can bowl. Bonus. Seven. It's the five and six side by side plus the seven pin. One piece of wood in front of and the other behind the five pin. Can she make it go? Well, the ball came back and went right behind the four pin. It's a ten. So there it is right now. They are in a tie after two full strings. Two fifty two to two fifty two. Well, Janet has led off this third string with a 10 and a 9. She's at 19, and Joanne has rolled an 8 and a 9. She's at 17. Here comes Janet. Two full on the head pin. Two, four, seven, six, and 10, and the wood is clustered around the 6 and 10. seven out but she didn't get what she wanted which was to kick the two pin over to get the two pins on the it's a nine strike that took care of a little frustration that Janet had with a 10, 9, and 9. Now let's see if our defending champion Joanne Rosano of Weymouth, Massachusetts is able to get rid of some of her frustration having begun the third string when they were tied with an 8 and a 9. Got a great chance for a spare here. It's 1 and 3. And a piece of wood with its nose in between. that one the bonus ball went off to the right after getting just three now she goes too far to the left she hasn't touched the head pin she has two left one and ten Nine. 
Janet has two bonus balls to be rolled. Seven with the first, leaving the one, the two, and the nine. Wood in front of the nine. Head pin still there. It's a ten. So close to a strike. Ten pins still there. Yes, she got it. Just. It was right on the edge of the gutter as she hit it. So Joanne has uh, six boxes to try to do something to preserve her streak. And here she is on the line at lane two here in the fairway. That was not a break. She got seven pins down. However, the object pin becomes the six pin. She has the eight and nine in the back, the six pin close to the 10 pin has a piece of wood across the front of it and she's studying this. Good shot, but it only got the six and 10. Eight pin still there. It's a 10, opposite a 10 by Janet, however, only five more boxes to go. Janet Pock leading by eight and with a spare in this sixth box. Joanne fires, and she almost had a strike, almost. Everything went down except the eight pin. It is still rocking, but it's not gonna go down. Now she has two pieces of wood that are off to the left and she has to be very careful because the two pieces of wood could divert the ball that is aimed at making a spare on the eight. Let's see if she gets it. She got it. All right, each with a spare in the sixth. Janet Park leading by eight. Two superb cattle pin bowlers. And Janet has a... No, she doesn't have a strike. I thought it was going to tumble, but the piece... One piece of wood on one side and one on the other. It's still rocking, but there are pieces of wood, one on each side of it, and they're preventing it from falling. All right, first spare, she fires, and she has it. And the leave is the four, seven, and eight with three pieces of wood at a strange kind of an angle, but let's see. She has three in a row for another $50 in bonus money, but more important, she's put herself in a position to win. Joanne came in here, of course. She's working on a spear. I'll get to it in a moment. And she gets seven. The three pins that she's looking at are the six, nine, and ten. If she were to win today, it would be her third in a row. Obviously, she has more than that in her whole string. But in this season, which has begun after our championship show, it would be three consecutive victories. She makes the spare. 
And that means that she, as well as the home viewer whose card is drawn, would receive the Rotman's chaise. So there's something else working as far as she's concerned. Now hoping for three in a row. And big hit. She gets nine as a fill. Has a single pin to pick up. It is the five pin. it the first time and then she got sidewall action and got it all right each woman will be working now on a spare we come to the final two boxes and depending upon what happens here Janet right now bowling leading by eight. Oh, she got a tough leave six is the fill but she has side-by-side -side pins in the five and six and behind that the seven and the eight it's pieces of wood are off to the right let's see what happens she made it oh wow that was a big big one and you can tell by her reaction another fifty dollars in bonus money Good try. A 10. Okay, Joanne comes up now. She has three marks in a row. They're all spares. And she's facing a 134 to win. 133 to tie and to go into extra boxes. Too bad, she got a split. Six is the fill, but she has the two, four, and uh, the six, ten. Good try, she got the two on the left and got the, the one of the pins to come over. However, not strong enough to knock down the six and ten. It's an eight box. Needs a 134 to win, a 133 to tie. Can't, she has to strike here. Oh, she just missed it. And Janet Pock has regained her championship. The championship she lost a year ago to Joanne. A spare, but that's not enough, obviously, even uh, were she to strike. She's at 119, and with a strike would be at 129, and Janet would win it. And she got a strike in the last box. So the match ends basically by a four. There they are, two super candlepin bowlers. And I don't uh, in any way qualify it or seem to qualify it or have somebody think I'm qualifying it if uh, I say women candlepin bowlers. I said two superb candlepin bowlers. All right, the final. By four, Janet Park defeats Joanne Rosano, 385 to 381. One hundred and fifty dollars to give away in the home viewer jackpot. Seven sixty-six is the total. Ten either side will win that. However, even if it's not anywhere near that, just for having the card drawn. 
This person will receive a $50 gift certificate from Christmas tree shops. Okay. Now what? People out there saying, oh no, he's going down the, no, he should go in the back where my card is. All right, let's see. 766, 10 either side. And this one comes from uh, Keene, New Hampshire, Mrs. Albert Drogue, whose guess is 790. So we're going to be adding another. Okay, let's see our Hilo jackpot. Okay, Joanne, give it a try. Okay, ladies. Both of you. Joanne, you knew, of course, you were going to get this eventually. Oh, yes. All good things must end sometimes. But, you see, I have a little envelope for you, and you are the marksman of the day because... I am. Yes. You had... You tied and marked, but you had two more strikes than she did. Wow. But she's smiling because That's she right. won. Yeah. <laughs> and this is from Din Brothers, uh, and uh, let's... See. Oh, another thing. You know that you had the highest losing ladies three-string <laughs> total in the program's history by one pin. Really? Yeah. yeah. Wow. Excellent. And yeah. Okay. Um, your money, of course, is, uh, you know how much you're going to get, $700 plus uh, 200 what is it? Uh, you got a lot of it here. I didn't even write it down. Around $300 in bonus money, and, and uh, you had 150 I left it over there. But okay, anyway, that's fine. You, you, <laughs> you guys will find out anyway. And anyway, let's see who the challenger is going to be. It's going to be Tony Wellspring from Methuen making her first appearance next week. Good luck to you, and it's been great having you here. Thank you. Okay. Nice. Thank you very much. We'll see you next week. Okay, everybody? Bye-bye.